Welcome to the Jeff Crilly Show. And now, here's Jeff Crilly. Welcome back to the Jeff Crilly Show. Let's talk about collaborative law because this is a, uh, it's, it's, I, I guess it's not a new form of law, but it's, it's one that is growing in, in terms of popularity because uh, couples just don't want to put the, the kids through a, 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 you know, a bitter uh, litigation. So my guests right now, Don Budner and Carla Calabrese, they are with the law firm of CalabreseHuff.com. Welcome to the Jeff Crilly Show. Thank you thank for you. having us. Yeah, thank you. Joining me on this segment is going to be my daughter, Sarah, because Hello. she went through a divorce just three years ago, and I know how painful it was for her. I I went through a divorce uh, to uh, with uh, Sarah's mom, so I, you know we, we both have been through it. Um, let's start by talking about what is collaborative law. Who wants to start? Sure. Collaborative is a relatively new model in the last 10 or 15 years in which the parties to a divorce and their attorneys work with a team that also includes a financial professional and a mental health professional to come to agreements on issues that will end up in a decree completely outside of the litigation process. Wow. And... It is, in my opinion, an evolved process that allows for healing and in which really every dollar you spend is going toward your final product, which is this decree, which is going to be kind of your Bible for how things go in your life, especially if you have children, until your children grow up. So it's it's a very, um, I think it's, it allows for creativity and flexibility that is not available at the courthouse. And so many of the features of the courthouse are not well suited to families in this trying situation. Wow. So for me, going through that process at that time, because I guess with the collaborative, from my understanding, it was, oh, I can't imagine being in the same room as my ex at that time. And so hearing from, and we talked before the show a little bit more about that, but from my perspective at the time, and I wish I had done a collaborative after you've talked about it with me, is that being in that high tense, high emotional situation, and then how do I, how would we ever be able to come to an agreement without fighting it out with all of our lawyers? Well, um, you know, every situation is different, right? And we did talk about your Sarah um, before. And I remember saying to you, if you had come to me, it would have been a different story. And I really believe that in my heart. Um, yeah, you were in a situation where you were scared of your of your spouse and um, you didn't really want to sit in the same room. So exactly. the process works where people, the, the two parties and their lawyers and the team, they do sit in the same room. That That is true, they do. But I will tell you, as far as safety goes, you would have been much safe, safer in a process where your lawyers were really on the same team than in a process where you had opposing, you know, you were literally pitted against each other, right? So they're looking, what's the best outcome for this now divorce couple? That's right. And so, if yeah. there's children involved and also, right. too, to have that element of everyone's emotional and to have someone on the in that team from the mental health. Mental health piece, yeah. Because so much is going through your head right. and you're just knee-jerk reactions of, oh, how do I, you know, get right. at them? <laughs> yeah. and, and, and I think what the other thing that's wonderful, you have this built-in mental health professional and that person's going to size up your fear. Okay, so was your fear really, I mean, was he going to come after you with a gun and kill you? I mean, she would help that. She would help figure that out. Or would, you know, would she say, this is not an appropriate case for collaborative because we have a, such a violent situation that this is not appropriate. But what you said to me after also was, oh, we're really good friends now. Yes. <laughs> so I thought, well, if you're time, really good friends yeah, now, on, the likelihood exactly. he wasn't probably going to, you know, pull out a 22 and whatever. <laughs> and then what about for your child, too, during that process? Is someone keeping track of, you know, how the emotional state of your children? Well, what's what's great is the mental health professional is taking stock of what's going on with both parents and where there's a concern for how the child is doing. Um, you can bring in a specialist geared just toward dealing with children in these high conflict situations. So you can customize the group basically according to this family's needs. And, you know, one thing just to add when you're talking about the situation where you really didn't want to be in the room with your spouse, 
the fact is you have a little boy and you are going to co-parent with this person really for the rest of your exactly. lives. So it's naive to think that if you go to court, you know, a lot of people come in and they want it done yesterday. They don't want to deal with all, you know, this big fat document. But the fact is that document is going to guide your life and you are going to interact with, with this this person with whom you've created a child. And if you think that your child is not going to be affected by the animosity between the two of you, you're wrong. You're just wrong. And in contrast to litigation, collaborative actually is a process that can provide for healing as it proceeds, as opposed to just further damaging the relationships and tearing each other down. Wow. And you couldn't be more correct about that. And two, that is a document that you're living with forever and you want to have the best outcome possible. But what happens after the collaborative process and then you need to go back? Are you, you know, back in court fighting or how does that work? That's also great, frankly, is that you've got this team now that intimately knows your situation. And whereas in court, you would have to go file a modification proceeding Uh. and fight through that, similar to what you would do in a divorce proceeding, you now are set up to go work with a mental health professional who is going to have years and years of training and working with couples. And the hope is that you can talk through it and come to a resolution. So everyone kind of regroups. From you can regroup. Completely years regroup. We've That's had incredible. that. Yeah, we've had that several times. We look at it like we are your divorce team and your family re- restructured family team professionals for life. Do you find in the adversarial process when you do have opposing attorneys and and legal teams that um, you get one attorney who's really got a financial motive in keeping the fight going? Absolutely. I mean, it's sad, but it's very true. I mean, it happens a lot. I I was up late last night in a situation just like that where, you know, frankly, when when you talk about collaborative, there are some attorneys who don't want to do it. And the reason is because they can make a lot more money fighting in court than with this procedure. And it's just such a shame. But there are definitely, you know, some attorneys out there who are motivated by, you know, one more dispute creates another series of hearings and briefs and another, you know, five or $10,000 for them. And let's talk about even the trauma of putting a child on a witness stand, because that, that, that happens. I mean, that's the, uh, sometimes the divorce can cause much more pain than ever occurred in the actual marriage. Am I right? Well, well I will say this. Um, The courts are good about protecting children, so it's not that likely that children get up on the witness stand. Okay. The biggest problem for children is what's going on at home and what's going on when the parents are in a litigation, a contentious litigation litigation process for their divorce versus something that is set up to really help people through the worst time in their, you know, one of the worst times in their lives. So, um, you know, that's where I think the difference is. Because, I mean, we try hard not to put children on the stand. I mean, it's, it's very much uh, not something that we'd like to do or people really should do. I think that's so fantastic. So how long does the process typically take with going through the collaborative process? Of course, we hate this question. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it so varies yeah. according to the case. But honestly, I, I have one collaborative case. And at the first meeting, all of the professionals were just raising their eyebrows, be- going, oh, no, because... It did not look good. And we are finishing in three meetings. Yeah. Wow. So, wow. That's amazing. You know, and so another thing that's great with the collaborative process is you can work offline, we call it. And so if they're like the mental health professional will help you come up with a parenting plan. And so you do that in offline meetings there and you can schedule as many, you know, as you need. And you've got there just one professional whose fees you're paying instead of as opposed two to lawyers. two yeah. lawyers so, who aren't trained in incredible. that. Right. And that's not our expertise. I mean, we think we we think we're like psychologists, but we're not. OK. <laughs> and so we you know, we have these phenomenal mental health professionals who are child development specialists who sit down with the two of you and create your whole parenting plan, sometimes that's done in like four meetings, whereas I have spent thousands and thousands of dollars fighting over the stupidest things. You know, is Johnny going to bring his backpack or he's going to get two backpacks? I mean, it's it's really crazy what can happen in the litigation process that we are just like, we're not doing that. Well, and the financial piece is is equally... Uh, beneficial, I think, because you've got one expert who's trained in this process, who's getting all the information in a transparent way. 
and it's being shared with everyone as opposed to you know paying for discovery and litigation and having you know two different experts with dueling opinions well, I, it's probably hard to put a ballpark number on it but is is a collaborative divorce uh, half as expensive as a traditional um, opposing attorney divorce here's what i can say if you went to trial i i would guess it would be less than half if you actually went to trial oh, yeah, and litigation for sure. Um, and you know, it's really hard. We we're early in the stages of trying to develop those numbers. Right. Um, but if you have any kind of contested litigation, collaborative is definitely going to be less expensive. Absolutely. And our guest right now from Calabrese Huff Law, and you are actually the experts in this. You have a, a long history of the collaborative law. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, I was really fortunate back in 2000 when the, um, process came to Texas that one of my buddies said, hey, you've, this is so up your alley. You're going to love this. You've got to do this. And I'll never forget it. I had an 18-month-old child. Wow. And I was really about ready to be done with the whole thing because it was it was just hard to do when you had, you know, little kids. And um, I went to the, to the training and it was just mind blowing. It was like, this is what I was meant to do. You know, I'm a counselor. I'm an attorney and counselor. I want to roll up my shirt sleeves and I want to help people. Mm. I don't want to fight over the stupidest little things. And, you know, I don't care if it lines my pocket. I don't care. I don't want to do that. I want to look back on my life when I'm 75 years old and say, what did I do for the world? And it was like, this was it. And all of my colleagues that were there, there were only about 15 of us that were invited to, to do it. Um, we're just the same way. We all felt the same way, like, oh, my God, this is our calling. And so that's that's how I started back way back then. And so since then, I was very involved in writing with some other colleagues of mine, writing all of the um, practice and protocol documents and things of that nature. And so somehow I got D Magazine got involved and we got to, got to be the experts in collaborative law, my partner and I and my that's other so partner exciting. in D Magazine. So wow. that's really fun. So, yeah, we, it's you know, it's it's a great process. Um, please call us if you have any interest in it. Um, we can share with you. You're, there's a lot of there's a lot of st people talking about it out there, and some of it is not so positive. But I think we can dispel almost any myth that you could throw at us. What is the biggest myth? Touching on that, oh, that you, yeah. I think. Well, one is that you have to be amicable to do collaborative law. Yeah, and you know the fact is, it is the rare couple that can be amicable through this emotionally traumatic process. So the process itself is is built to withstand the ups and downs that are going to come. What do you do if one isn't on board? They have they have they then, both have to agree. They okay. do. They both have to agree. Nobody can be forced into collaborative law. And maybe someone who's listening to this right now, how would they be able to, I guess, explain that to their to be ex? Hey, let's go the collaborative route. Well, there's a lot of literature about it online, and they can share that literature. There's a collab there's the collaborative used to be the Collaborative Law Institute of Texas, and now they just changed their name to Collaborative Do Divorce Texas. So now it's Collaborative Divorce. We say we're supposed to be we've been saying Collaborative Law all day, but it's pretty much Collaborative Divorce because that's mainly where we use that process. Um, but there's Collaborative Divorce Texas. They can go online and look at and um, find information there. And there's lots of tricks and tri uh, that we have about helping the other side. You know get to uh, understanding about it. But, give, um, give us your website and, and can you spell it for sure. us? Sure. It's uh, www.calabreshuff.com. So it's calabreshuff.com. And awesome. don't forget to like us on the Jeff Crilly Show page because we'll definitely tag you and Absolutely. make sure that those that are driving don't hit the car in front of you. <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have a link to their website as well, yeah. which is on the Jeff Crilly Sounds Show great. Facebook Thank page. you so awesome. much for having you guys us. Were great. They're fantastic. Thank you, Thank you so you. much. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Thank you. When we come back, a look at a suburb that you're going to have to take a second look at after listening to this segment, dining, festivals, and more, next on The Jeff Crilly Show. You're listening to The Jeff Crilly Show on Talk Radio 1190.